Hi, welcome to the next of our set of mini lectures on design. And today's mini lecture is going to be about one particular aspect of the design cycle. The figure right here shows the design cycle we've talked about in previous mini lectures on design. Uh, we start off at the beginning of a project right here by conducting research, doing some modeling, either numeric or simulation, fabricating a prototype, testing it, communicating the results. And we do multiple iterations of this cycle faster and faster until we converge to a final result. What I'd like to talk to you about today, though, is research. Research is probably the most critical step in the entire engineering design cycle. And experts in design spend a lot more time researching than novices, who tend to very quickly arrive at a decision on what they're going to do and do very little research to decide if this is really the best decision. And research we define over here by learning about a problem before you solve it and then finding information when you run into difficulties. Because it turns out that most problems have already been solved. And research is a critical step. And so why should you do research? Uh, what does research do for you when you're doing design? Well, as you remember, design is not just about solving a problem that's well laid out. Design is about exploring a solution space and finding new ways to do something that perhaps weren't originally intended. So research helps you expand the solution space to let you arrive at a better solution. Um, it also lets you stand on the shoulders of giants. And this quote, if I have seen further than others, it is because I have stood on the shoulders of giant, was from Sir Isaac Newton who said this because he built on the work of so many others in deriving his fundamental insights into the universe. And so if you don't learn from other people, your task is really gargantuan, almost impossible. Um, research lets you discover the boundaries of your own knowledge and expand them. And we'll talk about this a little bit later in a, a subsequent slide. Research lets you find better, easier, cheaper, and safer ways to accomplish the project goals than you might think of yourself, because you're building on the work of other people who have thought about this perhaps more than you have. Um, as we mentioned before, it distinguishes novice from expert designers. And as you become more and more of an expert designer, you're going to do more and more research. You might as well start learning how to do it early in your design career. Of course, research helps you better estimate the time, effort, and cost of a project, very critical in engineering since we have multiple constraints we have to address. And as we'll talk about next, doing research helps you avoid the cardinal sin of arrogance. This word hubris is an ancient Greek word and something I've been thinking a lot about lately. And hubris is defined as excessive pride and it's a common tragic flaw in many of the Greek tragedies. And you think, ah, oh, this is literature, it doesn't apply to engineering, but hubris is one of the sins we as engineers often fall into because we, when we do design, create things. And creation in a literature and historical perspective was that action reserved for gods. And if we are going to create new things, it's very rare that we have the wisdom to know how our creations are going to affect other people and affect society in the longer term. We're not given that type of wisdom. And this, of course, is referred to in many quotes, uh, this is from Tolkien's The Two Towers, where Saruman's looking into the Palantir, and he's turned because of that, because he did not possess enough knowledge about what he was doing. He suffered from hubris. Similarly, this quote from Talbot Mundy, who was a contemporary of Tolkien, says, he who seeks to outwit wisdom adds to ignorance presumption, and that is a combination that gods do not love. And when we presume on things we're ignorant about, we often run into trouble as engineers with our designs, and we have safety concerns, and people can even get killed. So, so what does this really mean? Let's consider that this oval is essentially the knowledge that, that is there to be discovered, the knowledge that exists in this world. Of course, what you know, the knowledge I or you have, is a very, very small part of the overall amount of knowledge. Um, if we're wise, what's larger than what we know are the things that we know we don't know. Uh, for example, I don't know enough very much about molecular biology or genetics. I know these fields exist, but I know I myself am quite ignorant about these things. The place that really gets you is this other area of knowledge are the things you don't know you don't know. 
And what I mean by this is there's a lot in the world you may be completely ignorant of that has a strong impact on your design project. And it's not the things you know you don't know that affect your design. It's the things you're completely unaware of because you don't take them into account. And this can cause all kinds of problems. And so be very, very humble in your ignorance of the world. And the only way to expand the two boundaries of the red oval and the blue oval are to do research, to learn about what you don't know, to expand your intellectual horizons, to become more humble. And this is, is really very critical for engineers and designers.